Hey YouTube, it's John. I wanted to go over off-grid solar for beginners. I'll have some considerations and even show you part of my beginner solar setup. So let's go. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification icon if you feel like it. Definitely appreciate it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about solar, why it, it worked out best for me, uh, why it fit my needs, and and kind of go from there. I think it's uh, a worthwhile thing to, to figure out ahead of time before a power outage happens. That way you've already prepared for it. And as a little bit of a disclaimer, make sure to check all of your local and state regulations as far as what it comes to, to off-grid power, because in some weird places, it's not legal. Also check with your HOA because sometimes solar panels don't jive if you live in a neighborhood. So anyway, let's, uh, let's keep the ball rolling on this. One other little disclaimer, if you're not comfortable working with electricity, by all means, hire an electrician that will get you the, the electrical solution that you're looking for and you'll be safe at the same time. So when you're actually in the planning phase of building your solar array or solar setup, uh, there are a couple things that you should actually consider before buying things. The first is the purpose. What is the purpose of this? Is it just going to be for a couple of light bulbs in a shed, maybe charge a, a phone? Is it going to charge some different yard tools, power tools, things along those lines? You know, the needs for, for something like that are gonna be a lot smaller than say running an HVAC system or trying to, you know, have a backup system for refrigeration. Surge wattage is actually going to be another uh, consideration that it's definitely important to think about. If you're running any kind of uh, equipment that has a compressor, such as a window unit or a refrigerator, a freezer, there's actually going to be a surge of electricity needed to start that compressor. So I'd recommend checking out online. You can find wattage charts for different appliances, basically whatever you're looking to run off of the solar power, you can actually find the requirements for that and scale up your solar setup accordingly. And what you're able to do with that chart is actually plan ahead and build a system that, that meets your requirements. So that's something to definitely consider. Now back to the show. I am not an electrician. I never claim to be. <laughs> definitely not my thing. Uh, but you want know, some basic safety most people can do it. So definitely make sure that you check all of the precautions and read up a little bit on, on electrical safety. It's definitely worth it. So solar is fantastic. It's a fantastic option as long as you're in what's called the Sun Belt. Down here in South Texas, not a problem. We have plentiful sunshine no matter the time of year. So why it's great? Well, there's, there's plenty of reasons. Uh, as far as preparedness, it's quiet, which is uh, a great option. Gas generators are great, but they're very noisy. They can produce a lot of power, but that noise is kind of difficult to, uh, to use while being kind of, uh, I guess, below the radar. Everyone in the neighborhood is going to know where, uh, where you are and that you have power. So obviously something that you want to take uh, into account. Uh, what else? We've got hydropower. It's very difficult to actually implement on a small scale. And you also have to have a creek, a stream, a river, portion of a lake, what have you, to make that actually work. Um, wind, you know, that's something I was looking into actually in this area because we do get a decent amount of wind. Of course, I'm recording on a day where there's basically a, a small, small breeze. So on days where you have no breeze at all, you're not making any power. So that's something that, uh, that kind of brought me to solar. You can probably see the panels up there. Whoop, whoop. There we go. So I went with solar because, uh, it's sunny almost all the time and it's silent. I get about 25 years, give or take on most of the components. Um, short of the batteries. The batteries are the most difficult part, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing is it's very easy to learn, especially off the grid. So I wanted to do something that uh, that was scalable. 
and solar is actually an exceptional way to do that because as opposed to with a generator unless you get an inverter you really can't stack the system together you can't stack multiple generators together to create more power for your setup so with solar you can you can add more panels you can reposition them you can add more batteries there's a lot of ways to, to continuously upgrade your system so I'm gonna show you my starter setup and uh, talk about how I'm going to to expand it further so that if there ever is a situation where the grid is down or just a power outage or a hurricane I don't know somehow cuts down the grid here I heard about a freeze I think a freeze would uh, would definitely be a great time to have this so um, it's enough of me talking right now let's go look at the stuff so one other fun caveat that I want to talk about um, is that I built this setup for under a thousand dollars so is it exactly what I want not quite but we're getting there so on to the stuff all right so the first thing are the panels as you can see I have two here I have two on the other side as well so they they catch a lot of the morning sunlight um, these are 100 watts I got those from Harbor Freight on sale for I believe it was $99 a piece so it's a good chunk of the expenses but I like them here because they actually fit in really well with the shed uh, and they're very difficult to see most people don't even know I have them this is actually a connection where all of the wiring for the solar panels go in and join into the input sections on the top half and then we have the output we actually have the the wiring going from here and into the charge controller now the charge controller what its main goal is is to protect the batteries so we can actually see the current voltage readout on the batteries we can also see what i'm pulling in currently 2.6 2.7 amps depending on on the uh, sunlight today usually it's a lot higher than that but the clouds have been rolling through so that's one thing to also consider if uh, if it's really cloudy you're not going to get as much sunlight definitely one of the biggest negatives that you have for four solar panels so uh, let's move on so next is the batteries i need to do a little bit better cable management i'm aware of that but i have them wired in parallel and they are uh they're lead acid batteries so we'll talk about that in a second so the lead acid batteries uh they're actually these are used which is where i came up with a lot of the cost savings these are 190 amp hours each and they are around 130 pounds a piece uh, i actually bought these used off of the facebook marketplace so that was pretty neat got a really good price on these as well so definitely shop around there's a lot of applications for these and they are pretty pretty big and pretty beefy so i really like those um eventually as far as scaling i would like to continue getting these or if i get a really good deal on some lithium batteries which can actually uh, drain a little further without any damage to the batteries have a longer life cycle something that i want to do so from the batteries we go to the inverter so this is a 2000 watt inverter uh, that is not a pure sine wave unfortunately that's one of the things that i'm looking to scale up the sine wave will help you with a lot more of the delicate electronics that need a constant supply of energy as opposed to a kind of a step down and a step up and the awesome thing is that from here you plug and play so the neat thing about these is that they have usb outlets and regular plugs so something to definitely consider now that you've seen my my current beginner setup what can i do with that i was very concerned with the grid becoming stressed and overloaded and shut down this summer we got close a couple times thankfully it didn't uh it didn't actually go down and what my goal was was to be able to run a window unit off of that setup during the middle of the day when it's the hottest, you know, that, that late afternoon, just it's 106, 107 degrees, just miserable. Wanted to make sure that all my family and all of our pets 
were able to stay cool during that time. So, so with that setup, I was actually able to run uh, my window unit, which was just a 5,000 BTU, into one of the rooms that we could all pile into. Uh, during the middle of the day, with peak sunlight, for about four and a half hours before the batteries would get a little too low and then we'd have to stop, give the batteries a break, give them a chance to recharge, and then we could go again. So that was the neat thing about having those 190 amp hour batteries is that I have that, that extended life out of it. So now let's talk about the goal. So the goal eventually is to actually put about two kilowatts onto the roof of the house. Uh, still south facing, but make sure that no one knows it's there. It's going to be kind of difficult to do. And then run a battery bank off of the back. Also, a couple people have, uh, have mentioned to me that they want to see what the birds are doing now. So let's show you. Here are the uh, Rhode Island Reds, and uh, then I'll show you the Australorps and the Polish. There are the Rhode Islands. And they are actually laying. Wow, I've got three eggs in there now. Fantastic. And you can probably see the, uh, the other birds. They are growing up quite nicely. So let's check them out. Hey birds. Oh, they're still not quite uh, friendly with me yet, but we're getting there. They are getting huge. So excited. So, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's really it. There we go. So, Hey, thanks again, guys. I definitely appreciate, uh, appreciate all your input. Appreciate you watching. So until next time, peace.